everyone. It's Larry Vanderwick uh, with Smoky Valley uh, Girls Basketball. And um, last week uh, we had a full week with three games. So we started out Tuesday night playing uh, Hutchison Trinity and uh, came away with a 45-36 win. Uh, Hutch Trinity has two girls that are their main scores. The other three girls that they put on the court, frankly, aren't very talented. Uh, so we worked hard to limit those two uh, scores. Um, and we did a fairly good job of it. Um, it was a game that we felt like we should have put away a little bit better than we did, but, but at least we got the win 45-36. Um, and that game, uh, McKinley Johnson shot well, four for eight field goals. She had 13 points. Uh, Ellie Brumbaugh had six points and sprained her ankle partway through the second half. Uh, Carrington Haxton had eight points, and Adrian Hazelwood, our freshman uh, uh, guard, had 11. Um, and uh, Brianna Pretty had uh, six rebounds. So, all in all, a solid win. Again, not as convincing as maybe it could have been, but it was still a solid win uh, from start to finish. Then we played Thursday night, which was a makeup game against Hoisington. Uh, that game had originally been scheduled for early January. Um, and uh, we went, traveled to Hoisington and, and uh, ended up winning there 47-38. Again, a game that we kind of led start to finish and never could put them away, but we at least uh, had a solid victory um, against a scrappy Hoisington team. Um, again, looking at the scores, Carrington Haxton had 14 points on 5 of 10 shooting. Um, Adrian Hazelwood had eight points. She's just solid night in and night out. Brianna Pretty had nine points and uh, 10 rebounds. So came just short of a double-double. So again, a good good night of basketball where we beat a team that we, we were better than and showed that we were. So it was good. Oh, well, then Friday we went to Clay Center, who's the number, uh, I think, three team in 4A and took on Clay Center in our backyard uh, and really um, struggled in that game, especially in the first half. Clay Center plays a very tight man-to-man -man defense, full court, and uh, got us sped up to where we struggled to score in the first half. Uh, went into the uh, locker room 33 uh, to 13 at halftime. Came out of the locker room and, and was very proud of the girls' effort to come back. I tried to s settle down, slow down, uh, and hit shots, and, and we did. We, we were outscored 14 to 13 in the third quarter. Uh, ultimately, we lost 60 to 28. Um, um, so one of those tough wins, again, didn't have full leg strength since uh, this was our sixth game in two weeks, uh, and Clay Center's tough uh, on a full tank of gas. So, you know, in that game, Adrian Hazelwood was, had 13 points for us, uh, uh, and Brianna Pretty had six points, but points were tough to come by uh, at Clay Center. This week, uh, we back, or we're back to a more normal schedule. We'll play Hillsboro at Hillsboro on Tuesday, and then turn around and play Larned at home on Friday. Uh, ho hopefully get two wins this week. Uh, we're currently seven and five, so uh, having a good season thus far. Uh, thank you all. Well, welcome back again for another week of Quarterback Club and Smoky Valley Boys Basketball. Uh, another long week for the Vikings as we had three games this week, uh, two of them against uh, state-ranked opponents, uh, the first of those being on Tuesday when we faced off against the Hutch Trinity Celtics. Uh, Trinity, good team. They've, they've had some struggles this year, but they create a lot of different mismatches. Uh, they have the Lucas Hamakey, who is a solid, solid player, averaged around 20 points a game at the Sterling Invitational Tournament uh, the week before, and he was very impressive again. I thought we did an excellent job on him, but he still was able to pick up his points for the night. I think he finished with 21, but uh, 10 of those points came from the free throw line. Um, we hung around. We actually got down early and actually were down by as many as 20 uh, in the third quarter. Uh, but then our kids never quit competing. We played so hard. We played with such energy. I really felt like it was a good turning point uh, for our squad this week. Um, we actually end up losing that game 58 to, or excuse me, 52 to 42, uh, but actually had it back as close as six or maybe even four uh, down the stretch. And we were really pleased with what we'd accomplished. Uh, Ty Miller had a really, really solid game. Uh, three for six from the floor. Uh, behind the three-point line, he finished with 11 points. He's actually still our best percentage three-point shooter. Uh, and Haven Lysel Stewart did what Haven does. He ends up with 10 points. Um, he didn't shoot the ball as well. They have a 6'5 kid in the middle that really caused a lot of problems for him. Uh, but he was able to get uh, the job done well enough, even dropped in six rebounds. 
Another one there. Uh, didn't have as many points. Jake Lucas, five points. He also had seven rebounds in that game. So, uh, again, tough game, hard-fought game, but learned a lot about our players along the way, and, and our, com- com- our competitiveness uh, really came through in that game. And I think that's something that we had been looking for uh, for a few games. On Thursday, we traveled to Hoisington. That was the game for the game originally scheduled for January the 5th. Um, this time again, another solid team, top 10 ranked Hoisington. Uh, they only have two losses on the season. One of them was to the number one ranked team in 5A. That's Hayes. The other team uh, they lost to was Hillsborough, who might be the hottest team I've seen play in a while. Uh, they don't seem to be losing to anybody. Hoisington has been having some struggles, ups and downs, trying to figure out lineups. So they've started a lot of different guys, but it really revolved around two players. Uh, Chandler, excuse me, um, Nicholson. Uh, who's just such a solid, solid player. He does so many things for them. Uh, six foot five, just moves the floor well. And also Haxton, and those two guys are really solid. They came into the game averaging, I believe, 18 and a half for Nicholson and about 14 and a half for Haxton. Um, and they're just a good team. Uh, we had a great first half. I thought we competed extremely well. And then right before the half, uh, lost a little bit of umph, uh, lost some leeway. And so we struggled a little bit to try to stay in the game. I think we were down 31 to 22 at the half, so down nine. Uh, came out in the third quarter, a little ho-hum at times, but uh, we out, end up outscoring them by two to cut back into that lead a little bit. And then in the fourth, really had a burst. We scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to really cut into that game. Again, another great effort team-wise for our squad. Um, we actually ended up cutting the game to four with around a minute uh, left to play. We ended up picking up full court. Tried to actually get a steal or a foul on that play, and we missed both. Uh, they end up hitting the guy deep. He makes a layup to put him up six. Uh, so that was as close as we got. So we lose that game 58-52. to 52. A number of uh, really good bright spots in that one. Uh, our constant, Haven Lysel Stewart, had 12 points. Again, difficult time shooting. Only 3 of 11. But again, facing up against guys that are very athletic. Had a lot of blocked shots against him. Uh, but he was 6 for 8 from the line. And he also had 10 rebounds. So it was a double-double for Haven. Uh, Ryan Helene got under the scoring column well. He actually had 13 points. He was our leader on the night. He was three for seven from beyond the arc. He also had five assists. And then another one there was Jake Lucas. Jake's had a little bit of a tough time finding his spot as far as scoring, and he really stepped back into the column. He had 11 on three for six shooting overall. Jake also dropped in um, five rebounds uh, for us as well. So again, another nice solid output for our team as far as how we played. Unfortunately, we weren't able to pick up the dub. And that sent us into Friday night. You know, we had to expend a lot of energy on Thursday night. And I was a little worried about how that made me win Friday at Clay Center. Clay Center was a one-win team. They had been scrappy against everybody they played. So we knew we were going to have to come in and play well. And I felt like we did. We jumped out early 12-2, uh, hit some big shots early. Unfortunately, we relied on those outside shots a little bit too much as we continued after they called the timeout. And then they didn't fall. Um, and so they actually end up taking the lead, I believe, by either four or five uh, in that second quarter. I think it was 19 to 15. And we end up finishing up the second quarter on a 10-1 run to go in at the half up 25-20. Third quarter, we come out. Uh, again, they competed extremely well against us. We were just pretty solid. Uh, we end up winning the third quarter 14 to 12. And we end up putting away in the fourth with an 18 to six quarter. So come away with the victory 57, 38 kids had a lot of fun. Our, our kids behind us um, who were there cheering us on our JV and our C team guys, they were loud. It was a loud gym, probably the loudest gym uh, we've been a part of this year. So really brought us back to that atmosphere. Had a lot of fun. Hard for me to talk the whole time, but it was fun. Again, Haven Lysel Stewart, what an excellent week for him. 14 points on 7 of 10 shooting. He also picks up 8 rebounds and 4 assists to go along with 2 steals. So what a night for Haven. He was again, and he was in foul trouble a little bit in the second quarter. So he actually didn't play as many minutes as he normally would have played, but he was really solid around the glass. He was really solid around the rim. Another few bright spots again. Ryan Helene had 11 points on 5 for 5 shooting. Ryan also dropped 6 dimes, uh, had 6 assists. And uh, actually had five rebounds as well, so might be our shortest guy on the court. And Ryan still pulls away five boards for us. Also had three deflections. And Jake Lucas again right there. He had uh, 10 points on four for five shooting. And Jake also had finished with two rebounds and six assists. 
another one I thought really complimented Haven super well was an eight point outing again for Cade Blanchard, our sophomore. Cade was solid around the rim. He was three for four. Um, and he also ends up bringing in a, a rebound, but he took up some space in there and he was excellent defensively. So again, a lot of bright spots for us. Um, so moved our record to four and eight. Um, our JV and our freshmen both ended up, or JV and C team, both ended up picking up wins at Clay Center as well. Uh, both of them lost at Hoisington, unfortunately. Um, again, Alan Meyer, Michael Ryan doing a great job for us and what we're asking them to, to do. Uh, love having them as our assistants. This week, we have another ranked opponent, Hillsboro. They are hot. They're playing well. Uh, seem to be sawing through everybody they play. We play them Tuesday. That will be at Hillsboro. Again, you can go to live.smokyvalley.org to find that link and be able to watch the game. Um, varsity game starting at 7. Uh, excuse me, 7.30. Girls game will be starting at 6. And then Friday night, we have Larned coming to town. It is our sweetheart night. Also, our Think Pink night. So our gentlemen will be in there. Uh, pink uniforms for the night. So it's another busy week for us. It's another hectic week. Lauren, it's kind of middle of the road. I think their records are right around 500. So game, uh, a game on Friday that we really need to get, but also a game on Tuesday that we need to look forward to and give ourselves an opportunity to compete because I believe this team is starting to click a little bit. I think we're starting to see what we can do and what we're capable of doing. Now it's just a matter of executing it and getting the job done. So again, thanks for having me back this week, and I look forward to talking to you again, hopefully with a couple of wins next week. We'll see you later. Morning, fellas. Uh... Tough one for us last week. We uh, played Sterling here at home, held them to their lowest output offensively in about every category, fewest points, worst shooting percentage, uh, most turnovers. But we uh, we couldn't uh, we couldn't score it. Uh, if we would have run outside and, and tried to jump in the snow, I bet we would have missed. So uh, we took a tough one um, this week. We got a really big big week for us. Uh, We've got uh, Ottawa here at home on Thursday at 6 and Kansas Wesson on Saturday at 2. Um, if we're fortunate enough to get those two, I think that would uh, that would seal us uh, into the top four in the league and, and get a home playoff game. So we're going to have a lot riding on on this game this week, both games this week. So um, it was a tough one the other night. You know, our kids, kids battled, but, man, just – couldn't throw it in the ocean. Uh, you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. But uh, stay safe. We'll hopefully see you guys soon. Good morning. This is Dylan Gronsel with uh, Bethany College Women's Soccer. Um, just kind of update on what we're doing. This week we started our small group training and weight workouts. Uh, so last Friday the girls kind of set a, uh, a max for themselves. And our goal is to look to grow on that by the different weight workouts we do over the next couple couple months and we'll test them periodically uh, throughout the semester to make sure that they're gaining strength and they're increasing those maxes so that's kind of our goal as we work through the semester they're also starting on their small ball work so that's a chance for them to develop as individual players becoming better with the ball at their feet also while increasing some of like their small group agility like little hops uh, bounds things that tie to the game of soccer and so on so that's what we're doing this week and we'll continue to grow and First game is February 22nd in Wichita versus Friends. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hi everyone, this is Brandi Stewart, the head volleyball coach at Bethany. We played our first games um, on Saturday and ended up getting a fifth set win over Sterling, as well as a sweep over Bethel. Um, I'm really proud of the girls for how they responded, um, fought back, and were able to get two wins um, to start off the 2021 year. Really excited and looking forward to the rest of the season. Have a good week. Good morning, this is Oliver Rubenstein, the golf coach at Bethany. Um, not too much to report since the last time I checked in. Today is our official first day of, of spring practice. Um, the weather's nice enough that we're going to be able to get out there, I think, today, tomorrow, Wednesday, possibly Thursday. Um, and then I think the cold weather comes in Friday, and I'm not too sure how long for, but there could be a few back to back days of indoor practice. Um, we've got four weeks until the women's first tournament and five weeks until the men's first tournament so um, from now until then it's going to be a lot of a lot of practice whether that's inside or outside um, and then hopefully six or seven rounds of qualifying to determine uh, what the traveling team will be so with that and um, three workouts a week for the team and, and on my side of things just trying to finish up recruitment with some girls Hopefully now that 
on campus visits have began today. We can get some girls to, to come and visit and, and see the campus for themselves rather than, than virtually. So fingers crossed that we can be finished up with that sooner rather than later. Thank you. Well, hello folks, this is Coach Carter here. We're gonna talk about our staff. We have pretty much the entire staff in place now, save one person. We've got Coach Snyder, our offensive coordinator. We've got Coach Kosick, our defensive coordinator. Coach Williams, our defensive line coach. Coach Kincaid will be coaching our receivers. That is a move from running backs coach. Coach Grigsby will take over our offensive line. Coach Mike Kleiss will come in and be our running backs and special teams coach. Very excited about the progress we've made. We've uh, targeted a higher level GPA student and got a lot of good feedback. But we also want to make sure that those guys who might not be ready for school still have a chance with us with the Ascension program. So we're excited about that. We built a program and, and spoke to a lot of the parents about being a good citizen on campus. Um, so citizenship on campus, progress, making progress towards your degree, and then of course, winning championships. That's what we really want to do. We want to improve our program. That's our big recruiting pitch. Improve this program and then we want you to be improved because you were here. We stand on the cusp of National Signing Day. And uh, right now I can tell you, looking at our board, we have a lot of good potential young men coming in. We have uh, verbal commits, we have signed commits. We are doing some really good things. You all have a great day. We'll see you next week. Good morning, quarterback club. Hope you're enjoying your breakfast on this great Tuesday morning. Uh, just a couple updates for track and field. Uh, really, we don't have a lot of updates. Uh, we took last weekend off, coming off of a three-day competition two weeks ago. Um, but we will be competing at Wichita State this upcoming weekend, just a one-day competition. And that'll be our last one before conference. Um, besides that, got a couple new kids starting at semester that we're real excited about and recruiting's going well. Um, but that's pretty much it. So we'll check in next week. Have a good one. Bye.